What's up guys? We are back with another Super 7 Ultimate Silverhawks Wave 1 review and we're taking a look at the other good guy, the other hawk in this wave. Just like Wave 2, it was two and two, two good guys, two bad guys. So we've had Quicksilver, now we're taking a look at the other Steel Twin, we're taking a look at Steel Heart. Now she comes in the same kind of packaging that all the other hawks come in, standard, normal-ish size for an Ultimates figure. You got the Silverhawks logo on the front of the slipcover, Silverhawks on the back, you got the silver and blue. Pop that off and you've got her there in the big window. You got the Silverhawks logo down there on the bottom, more of that Starfield patterning, tons and tons of chrome and foil all over these, and then you've got that sort of ghostly visage on the back, the sort of hologram image of Steelheart along with her bio. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Ultimates Steelheart, so the other twin that completes that little group, and then of course the fourth adult Silverhawk that kind of completes, in some ways, the core of the core team. We'll get Copper Kid at some point, but he's definitely a little bit of a different kind of a character. So we've got, you know, for all intents and purposes, most, if not all, of the team, depending on what you really care about. Now, as far as this figure goes, it's still pretty standard Ultimates fare. However, this one does seem to be locked down in ways that the others simply are not. And I've kind of harped on this with the other figures in that they're all kind of locked down, but Steelheart is definitely a problem when it comes to articulation. So we've got a head that really can't do much. She can look down slightly and up slightly, that's about it. She's got a little tilt, she's got rotation. Arms out at the shoulders, you've got rotation there, we've got a bicep swivel. We've got our single jointed, slightly better than 90 degree uh, elbows. You've got hinges, you've got rotation. Her torso, though, is the probably the most locked down female torso I have seen in an Ultimates. It has literally no range whatsoever to do anything except swivel, which is which is definitely going to be a problem because that swivel is so high up that it really just it makes it kind of awkward to pose this one for me. Legs go out only about that far. I kind of stressed it by even doing that. They're they're pretty locked down. Uh, they don't really kick forward much either. It's really, really, really tight at the hips on this figure. There's just no clearance here. And then you only got a slight thigh twist up there. Like it's, it's less than usual on this one. Something about these hips in particular definitely seem to be restricting her. Uh, you've got your single jointed knees. Eh, not, not 90, but pretty close. There is swivel there as well. So that does help with the lack of a thigh swivel or a full on thigh swivel anyway. And then we've got our hinges, and you've got rocker down at the ankles, and the rocker's okay. It actually still manages to go up over, you know, the sort of stirrup kind of boot ankle armor that they wear. So she is very much in line with Ultimates, but at the same time, I feel like even amongst the other Silverhawks, she somehow suffers a little bit worse. Now, visually, I think overwhelmingly she's all right. I do have roughly the same concern with her as I do with Steel Will, and that, I mean, I'll just get it right out of the way. I still think they're both too blue. I think they're the wrong color. And I've said this in every single review, I think, is that the names dictate their colors. So Quicksilver is silver, Bluegrass is blue, the Steel Twins are steel, which definitely does have a hint of blue in it, but I've always thought of them as edging more on the gray side than the blue side. These figures tend to lean more blue than gray. They're not as blue as bluegrass, so that's definitely a positive, and they're certainly not silver like Quicksilver, but I feel like their colors are are slightly off for me. I do think the finish on the figure looks really good, though. She is very much, you know, got that sort of sparkly luster that the other figures have, and it does hit the light really well, so if you get her in the right lighting, uh, she is going to sparkle and shine a little bit. There is some shading on her, not as much as, say, Quicksilver, but there is a little bit. You've got other hits of paint as far as the little accents to give her more of the asymmetry. So, of course, you've got, you know, your partly real arm over on her her right, your left, and then you've got the, like, the arm and the leg bands with that metallic blue, which I do really like that it's kind of like an arctic metallic blue. There is a lot of sculpted detail in her as far as, like, the, the so-called plating of the armor. So you've got stuff that sort of accentuates what would be musculature on the arms, the biceps, and the triceps. She's got, you know, armor for the abs, which do sort of uh, accentuate that a little bit. And then you've got the line work on the armor itself, the knee pads, things like that. So she does look pretty good overall, but I do think, you know, I, maybe I'm just seeing things wrong, but I do still think she is a little bit too blue for my taste. Thankfully, the head sculpt is really nice, though. I am happy with this. She is still not necessarily as good as her brother. She looks more like Bluegrass in terms of what he was presented with, which 
at the same time is one of the best Ultimates faces we got. So her face is fully painted, eyes are clean, eyes are crisp, eyelashes look good, so do the lips. That was kind of one of my concerns with Quicksilver is that he really didn't have painted lips. She does and it definitely helps to break up some of the sculpt on her face. And the sculpt on its own is really nice. You know, her her helmet, the top of her, her helmet anyway, is more like a hairstyle. So hers is, you know, again, unique just like the rest of them. And this looks really good. There's some line work in there to bring out that sculpt. But the paintwork is really nice. If there's one thing to take away from these figures is that overwhelmingly the faces do look really good. Quicksilver is unfortunately the, you know, the worst of the bunch, but he still looks better than I, ex I expected him to. And I think that Steel Heart kind of falls somewhere in the middle alongside Bluegrass with Steel Will absolutely taking the top spot just because he has so much added detail from all of that printing. But she is going to look really nice alongside her brother. And again, she does look quite a bit similar to Bluegrass, and I was really happy with that head sculpt and paint job as well. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, let's start with some other Hawks. So we've got her brother on the left. We've got Quicksilver here on the right. And I think this works pretty well. She should be shorter than both of them. I have had some folks mention to me that, that they think that Quicksilver is way too big for this line. And seeing them like this, you know, I sort of get where people are coming from, uh, but I think more so personally, now that I'm getting them all together and sort of looking at them as a whole, I think Steel Will is probably too small, more so than Quicksilver is too large. I know that's, you know, two sides of the same coin, but I think he should be a little bit bigger, which would make her look a little bit smaller and make him look maybe more normal. But I do think this works okay, but I do think I'm starting to see what people are saying because Quicksilver does look at least slightly taller, but she looks pretty solid, at least compared to these two. And then let's, of course, do some other lines. So let's pull, let's pull her brother aside. Here's a figure arts here is Superhero Piccolo. Let's pull Quicksilver aside. Let's do a, let's do a NECA turtle. There's Leo, who has seemingly lost a sword somewhere. Let's pull Piccolo aside and let's do, let's do Mythic Legion. So here's an orc and I don't know why I'm picking only green figures. And then let's do one more. Let's do Mezco and this will not be a green figure. This will be Conan. So there is the Mezco Conan for some comparison. So, I mean, if you've messed with Ultimates, you know exactly what to expect. She's very much in line with, with Ultimates, very much in line with female Ultimates figures, and is going to work really well with pretty much anything 7-ish inch range. Now, as far as accessories goes, the Hawks in Wave 1 are definitely similar, and then the Hawks in Wave 2 are similar, but they're different from each other, if that makes any sense. What they come with and the sort of things they come with have changed across waves. To, to start with, we do get some extra heads with Steelheart. And just like the regular head, there is no added range of movement here. They're all really locked down. The first of which we get her, her helmeted visor down head, which I really like. I'm a big fan of this one, just in the same way that I like Quicksilver's because of how it looks. Sculpt is good. Paint is nice on it. She also comes with this alternate head, which is supposed to be like a, an angry expression. Not the biggest fan of this. I kind of feel like she smelled something she doesn't agree with here. But it's okay. There's just nothing too exciting about this one. I probably will never, will probably never use that one. We get three extra sets of hands. So she has the sort of relaxed hands on her in the box. You get a set, of course, a set is two of the flat palm, like flying style hands. And of course, you get a, a human hand and a cyborg hand for the alternate sides. We get a set of gripping hands, just normal gripping hands. And then you get a set of fists as well for her. Now, keeping in line with the hawks that fly, she does come with the replacement arms and these still do, they're just like the rest of the figures, they have the swappable shoulders. And just like Quicksilver and just like Steel Will, I am finding trouble, for me in particular at least, I am finding trouble swapping her right shoulders out. The pegs are different between the left and the right arms, and the right one is just difficult to take out. So I'm going to find myself probably not doing that a whole lot when it comes to these figures because the frustration level for one is, is annoying and I don't want to risk breaking them. That said, you know, you still have the option to have the wings out and they look good. There is no articulation at the elbow just like the rest of the figures because, you know, they really can't be with how these are designed. So that's, that's still a frustrating thing for me. But I am happy that we get these just, you know, for sake of having that, since it's such an important aspect of these figures. And then we get the effect parts that go along with these shoulders. So you do have, you know, you've got the little, the laser turrets because they still have the weird, I still find this to be such a weird way to, to shoot a laser through a shoulder. You've got the actual blast, and then you get the actual, like, the impact point here. 
that will clip onto the end, you know, if you want to have them blasting Monstar, or one of the other bad guys. And then lastly, we do get a bird, and we get Razor with uh, Steelheart. And just like Quicksilver, her bird is articulated. So that's one of the things that's different between the waves. Wave 1 birds are articulated, Wave 2 birds are not, but the Wave 2 figures come with more, I guess, goofy and deep cut kind of accessories. So that's, that's where things were changed. After getting Razor out, honestly, this one might be my favorite. I thought that that Tallyhawk got special treatment because, you know, Tallyhawk is Tallyhawk, and that's why it was articulated. But it's just a wave one thing. I don't understand why we decided to go this route. You've got articulating legs, which honestly aren't all that necessary, but you do have a swiveling head. And what's really cool, and I didn't catch this for Tallyhawk, is that the heads pop out, and they're meant to pop out and be swappable between the two birds. So you can have the mouth open or closed on either body because of course you do get a second bird with the wings outstretched and Razor's a little bit different because the wings are not nearly as big so this is a, a bit of a smaller more compact bird but I really like this one and I like the metallic paint on this on the neck and like the, the feathers around the neck look really really good so you've got the the swiveling legs here and then you've got the swiveling head also not too much when it comes to articulation but it adds a little bit of, of you know, oomph when you want to kind of pose them out a little bit. So she gets pretty much the exact same kind of stuff that Quicksilver had. So I'm finding myself to be kind of confused now that I've, that I've looked at both Wave 1 and 2 in the sense that Wave 1 is very much similar when, when, when we get to their accessories. And then Wave 2 is very similar, but they don't really, you know, cross paths, so to speak. The birds are different between both waves. And then the kind of things we get are also different. You kind of just get the bare minimum with these figures in terms of what you actually need with the Wave 2 figures, you get, you know, the deep cut stuff, the weird stuff that we kind of know and expect with Ultimates. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with Steelheart, but she's she's not perfect by any means, right? I think overwhelmingly my main gripes with this figure are going to come down to articulation because she is difficult to pose. I am finding some issues posing her. Not in the sense that she can't pose, it's just that she is locked down. The legs in particular, the hips, are surprisingly locked down in the sense that she just doesn't really have any range there. And then of course, the torso, while not unexpected in terms of how it's locked down, I feel like it's worse than usual for no real reason whatsoever. She does look good though. I'm happy with the way she looks. The sculpt is nice. The paint is clean and crisp, although I do think she leans more blue than she should. Face, however, was definitely my main concern for these figures, and thankfully she is right up there with some of the better figures in the wave, in the line, and she's going to look really good alongside her brother, and Bluegrass, and Quicksilver, and then of course she does come with some pretty solid accessories, and I'm happy to see that her bird as well uh, got some extra attention being able to actually move. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimate Silverhawks Wave 1 Steelheart. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.